get it that far, you can also just give it a tap. Make sure they're nice and snug. And repeat the other side. Okay, so now we've got the main body all put back together. Um, the O-ring for the uh, sight glass, sometimes it's necessary to change, other times it's not. But if you notice leaking, then I would change it. If not, don't worry about it. Okay, now back to the manifold. We're going to put on our new air, our pulsation dampener. Just push it on, grab your clamp, doesn't matter which way it goes back on, as long as it goes back on. You'll notice sometimes with the new ones, it seems to be a little thicker than the old one. You may have to adjust to get that clamp to get it to seat. Now we've got that back on. We'll take our screwdriver and tighten it up. Now generally if you're replacing this diaphragm and you've uh, using the same retaining ring There'll be a, a mark where this has been tightened down to previously. Just take it back down to that so that you don't see the mark anymore. And that should be tight enough. If by chance you're, you, when you fire up the pump and it leaks a little bit, just tighten the clamp a little more. Okay. Now. We're going to reinstall our valves. Take the new ones. Before you put them in, make sure the springs are good in them. Sometimes what happens is the coating that they put on these protect, uh, protect the steel will make them stick. So just make sure that they're free moving. You put your lower di uh, valves in first. Take your valve O-rings. Place them in. And then we're going to do the ones in the manifold. Now, in the manifold, where the valves sit, there is actually two little grooves in both chambers. What you want to do is to make sure that you get the one leg of that valve to sit in between the groove. Otherwise, the valves will not seat properly in the manifold. Take, put your O-rings in place. Now, when you go to install it, hold the manifold like so in the valve O-rings because they will have a tendency to drop on you. Pick it up and then let it drop on. Replace your nuts. Snug it up. There. Now we're going to replace the air accumulator diaphragm. Just drop it in place and you can push it into the little groove in the uh, main body of the manifold. Take the air accumulator diaphragm head, place it on your pump, reinstall all the bolts.
when tightening these down, you want to do a star pattern on this as well to bring the, the head down even. And I what may it might might have well done so. Okay. Now that we have the top back on, what we need to do is put air back in. Take the cap off. Hit it with uh, 125 pounds of air. Pardon me. You can hit it with just air straight out of your compressor. Most compressors hit 125 PSI. Done. For now. There's a little secret I'll tell you. Oh, the other thing is this little O-ring here is for the sight gloss. If you desire to change it as well along with everything else, use a five millimeter Allen key. Loosen the bolts on the sight gloss. Take sight glass off. There's your O-ring. Use your fingernail. Pull it out. <coughs> Grab the new one. Put it back in. Tighten your bolts back up. Now with this being plastic, you don't want to over tighten. So you tighten it up snug and then just give it a quarter turn after. And that takes care of that. Now we will now put in our drain plug. Tighten up. <clears throat> now the oil you're going to replace it in here is SAE30 non-detergent oil. When you fill it up, fill about half the sight gloss, bleed off the air. You may have to pull, depending on how you're doing this, if you're doing it on a bench or on the pump, pull the engine over, make sure it doesn't start bleed out the air. Now, <clears throat> after you've got this all remounted and oiled up, you may need to bleed the air off. What you do is you fire up your unit and with no guns or booms or anything open, have it run. You set your pressure to whatever you're spraying at, whether it be 10 pounds, 20 pounds, even 60 pounds. Take a look at the red return line that's coming off your regulator and back to your tank or any return line, doesn't matter what color it is. If it's bouncing, then you now need to bleed some air off. Two ways of doing it. Take a pen, push on the little nipple, or use the cap. and just give it a quick little shot. Once you see the return line and the gauge settle down, you know you have the proper amount of air in, in this chamber. Okay, I hope this has been helpful and informative on rebuilding a D30 pump or any diaphragm pump. It's all basically the same. Just take your time and remember to mark your parts. And uh, any question, you can always get a hold of us at rittenhouse.ca or call us on our 1-800 number.